Hey, what's up, people? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the evolution of the Mustang version of the Coyote engine. This includes Generation 1, 2, and 3, as well as the Special Edition Roadrunner engine and the two Coyote variants, the Voodoo and the Predator. Like any of our videos, we have a lot of good stuff to talk about, so let's get rolling. First things first, if you find value in our videos, go ahead and give this one a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way you're notified every time we release something new. We'll kick things off with the Generation 1 Coyote engine. I'll provide a little bit of history, and then to stay organized, I'm going to start at the short block and work my way up. The Gen 1 Coyote engine first made its way onto the scene in the 2011 Mustang GT. It shared similar architecture to the 4.6 liter modular engine and was available in the 2011 to 2014 Mustang GT, where it saw a few subtle changes and a special addition during this time frame. Whenever the Coyote engine was released, it was rated at 412 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 390 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. All generations of the Coyote, including the variants, featured cast aluminum engine blocks. The Gen 1 Coyote has a 92.2 millimeter bore and a 92.7 millimeter stroke. Take those two values and multiply them by eight cylinders, and you get a displacement of 4.951 liters, which is technically five liters, right? The short block consisted of a forged steel cross-plane crankshaft, hyper-eutectic pistons with a short skirt and four valve reliefs, and forged powdered I-beam connecting rods. The piston dome volume was 3.472 cc, and with the 57 cc combustion chamber in the cylinder head, this netted an 11 to 1 compression ratio. For the 2011 and 2012 model year Mustang GT, the Gen 1 engine used oil squirters to help cool the pistons. Like the engine block, the cylinder heads are cast aluminum as well. They're outfitted with dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. The intake valve measures 37 millimeter and the exhaust valve measures 31 millimeter. Now, one of the marketing tools for this engine was Ford's TIVCT, which stands for Twin Independent Variable Cam Timing. Ford was no stranger to variable cam timing as the 4.6 liter three valve engine had this technology as well as other Ford models. This TIVCT technology was the Coyote's secret weapon for both power and efficiency. Twin independent variable cam timing allows the Ford calibration engineers to advance or retard the timing of both the intake and exhaust camshafts independently. Now, we won't go down the rabbit hole for the specifics of twin independent variable cam timing. So simply put, this allows for improved power and torque, particularly at lower engine RPM, as well as improved fuel economy and reduced emissions. Both the intake and the exhaust camshafts share 12 millimeters of lift. So for the 2013 to 2014 model year Mustang, Ford made just a few subtle tweaks to the Gen 1 engine. They removed the oil squirters and changed the piston, which shared the same coating as the 2012 and 2013 Boss 302 piston. This engine was rated at 420 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 390 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. Now, we're not sure where the extra eight horsepower comes from. Uh, I've read where both the piston coating and the removal of the oil squirters help with this. Then again, I also heard rumors that Ford simply recalibrated the PCM. At the end of the day, it's eight flywheel horsepower. That's minuscule, and for the most part, all 11 to 14 Mustang GT engines make very similar power and stock trim. Now, I did make mention of this in another one of our videos, but one little odd fact about the late production 2014 Mustang GTs is that some received 2015 cylinder heads. This was mentioned on a few forums back in the day whenever enthusiasts were tearing into these engines, adding bolt-on go-fast goodies. Other attributes of the Gen 1 engine include port-style fuel injection, it weighed 431 pounds without accessories, had a composite intake manifold, and an 80 millimeter throttle body. So the special edition Coyote engine on the Gen 1 platform was codenamed the Roadrunner. This was the engine found in the 2012 and 2013 Boss 302 Mustangs. It was designed to be a high RPM, naturally aspirated powerhouse, and that it was. The Boss engine was a fortified version of the Coyote that featured center forged connecting rods, CNC ported cylinder head, and a Boss specific short runner intake manifold. The Roadrunner also utilized different camshafts with 13 millimeters of lift and stiffer valve spring, which helped give the engine its high RPM capabilities. At the time, it became the highest horsepower naturally aspirated engine to roll off the Ford assembly line, cranking out 444 horsepower with a staggering 7,500 RPM redline. So the first major overhaul of the Coyote engine happened when Ford completely restyled the Mustang 
for the 2015 model year. The Gen 2 engine would serve as the power plant in the 2015 to 2017 Mustang GTs. The primary focus of improvement for the second generation Coyote engine was allowing it to breathe better. Most of these improvements came from lessons that were learned by the Ford engineers whenever they developed the Roadrunner engine in the Boss 302. The short block remained largely unchanged and center Ford connecting rods were used and they were borrowed from the Boss 302 since they are more durable for high RPM operation. The top of the piston was redesigned with deeper valve relief to make way for the larger intake and exhaust valves. Sticking with the high RPM theme, the Ford steel cross plane crankshaft was rebalanced for high RPM use and oil squirters also made a return in the Gen 2 engine. The design of the cylinder head was reworked to include revised ports that allowed for a straighter path to the valves for less restrictive intake and exhaust flow. There were also combustion chamber modifications to accommodate the larger valves, but the Gen 2 engine still had the same 11 to 1 compression ratio as the Gen 1. The larger intake valves measure 37.3 millimeters, and the larger exhaust valves have a diameter of 31.8 millimeters. Stiffer valve springs were used to ensure that the valves close completely at high RPM. Revised intake and exhaust camshafts were used, which both had a larger lift at 13 millimeters. The intake side now used a mid-lock phaser, which would allow for better control of the valve timing over a broader range of engine RPM. Topping off the Gen 2 was a new composite intake manifold that incorporated charge motion control valves, which is short for CMCVs. This technology was used in previous generations of the Mustang and the 4.6 liter engine, but they were referred to as IMRCs or intake manifold runner control. The CMCVs increase the air charge tumble and swirl for improved air fuel mixing, resulting in better fuel economy, idle stability, and lower emissions. All of these changes would allow the Gen 2 engine to make 435 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 400 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. If we do the easy math, that's an increase of 15 horsepower and 10 pound-feet of torque over the Gen 1. But more impressively, these ratings happen at the same RPM as the Gen 1. Other characteristics of the Gen 2 engine include port style fuel injection. It also weighs 431 pounds without accessories, a composite intake manifold, and it still utilizes an 80 millimeter throttle body. Shortly after the 2015 Mustang GT and Gen 2 Coyote engine hit the streets, Ford revealed the new GT350 and GT350R Mustangs. These cars would be in production from 2016 to 2020, although they did build a limited run of 100 cars for the 2015 model year. So at this particular time, the most radical, naturally aspirated engine Ford has ever produced sat between the frame rails in the GT350s. It was codenamed Voodoo, and for all the right reasons. This engine would pump out 526 horsepower at 7,500 RPM and 479 pound-feet of torque at 4,750 RPM. The block shared the same bore spacing and deck height as the Coyote, but it did have a 94 millimeter bore and 93 millimeter stroke. That yielded a displacement of 5.2 liters or 315 cubic inches. In order to achieve the larger bore and accommodate the larger intake and exhaust valves, Ford's engineers used plasma transferred wire arc cylinder sleeves or PTWA for short. Instead of using a traditional cross plane crankshaft, this engine would boast a flat plane crankshaft in order to achieve a lighter weight rotating assembly. A flat plane crankshaft uses a 180 degree configuration as opposed to the 90 degree geometry of a cross plane crank. This means that the rod journals are opposite of each other and when one piston is at top dead center, the neighboring piston is at bottom dead center. By nature, this design requires a different firing order. The Voodoo engine received its own set of CNC cylinder heads and they were dressed with specific camshafts providing 14 millimeters of lift, valves and valve springs, all of which cater to high RPM operation. Feeding air into the engine is an 87 millimeter throttle body and another Voodoo specific which is known in the aftermarket as the GT350 intake manifold for obvious reasons. This manifold featured long and wide intake runners that would allow the Voodoo to cast its witchcraft to a tune of 8,000 250 RPM. Combine that with the flat plane crankshaft and a GT350 specific muffler and you get one hell of an exotic sound in factory Mustang. So the third generation of the Coyote engine debuted in the 2018 Mustang GT. No doubt about it, the biggest change to the Gen 3 was the addition of direct injection alongside the port fuel injection. Utilizing a dual fuel system would allow for a higher compression ratio while maximizing performance and fuel efficiency. The short block in the Gen 3 would now feature the same plasma transferred wire arc cylinder bores used in the 5.2 liter Voodoo engine. Stroke remained the same at 92.7 millimeters, but the bore size was increased 0.8 millimeters to 93 millimeters. This netted an overall displacement of 5.035 liters. Similar to the Gen 2 improvements over the Gen 1, Ford rebalanced the Ford steel cross plane crankshaft yet again to support even higher RPM operation. The piston in the Gen 3 features a raised dome and deeper valve reliefs to clear the larger valves. 
The cylinder heads were reworked for the Gen 3 engine and had further revised ports from the Gen 2, resulting in similar flow characteristics to the CNC ports on the Voodoo engine. This cylinder head incorporated a 55.9 cc combustion chamber with a raised dome piston. This would put the compression ratio at 12 to 1, which is a full point more than the Gen 1 and Gen 2 engines. The larger intake valves measured 37.7 millimeters, and the larger exhaust valves came in at 32 millimeters. Ford used even stiffer valve springs for the Gen 3 to further improve high RPM operation. Both the intake and exhaust camshafts were revised and would feature 14 millimeters of lift versus the 12 millimeters of lift in the Gen 1 engine and 13 millimeters of lift in the Gen 2 engine. The midlock phaser would remain in place on the intake side, but Ford did switch the exhaust phaser to an integrated oil control valve in the cylinder head for better control at all speeds and loads. The composite intake manifold on the Gen 3 engine was revamped and would feature a similar runner design to the GT350 intake manifold. All of these great changes would allow the Gen 3 engine to crank out 460 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 420 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM which if you paid attention thus far, it makes peak power and peak torque at the same RPM as the Gen 1 and Gen 2 engines. The Gen 3 engine tips the scale at 425 pounds without accessories, which is six pounds lighter than the Gen 1 and Gen 2 engines, and it had an 80 millimeter throttle body as well. So the ring leader at the time of this video in the Coyote engine family is the Predator engine found in the 2020 and newer GT500. This engine cranks out an earth-pounding 760 horsepower at 7,300 RPM and 625 pound-feet of torque at 5,000 RPM thanks to the 12 pounds of boost from the 2.65 liter supercharger. Contrary to the 5.2 liter Voodoo engine in the GT350, the Predator uses a traditional cross-plane crankshaft instead of the flat-plane crank. Since power is easily obtained from the supercharger, the compression ratio is 9.5 to 1. The cylinder heads are a CNC ported version of the Voodoo castings and feature heavier valve springs and larger diameter valves. A few other talking points for the Predator is that it utilizes traditional style port fuel injection, weighs 536 pounds without accessories, and it has a 92 millimeter throttle body. Whew, that was a lot to talk about, but I hope you all enjoyed it and were able to take away some really good information. Without question, these engines have definitely proved themselves over the years. One of the greatest strengths of the Coyote is the aftermarket support not to mention the drivability, efficiency, and the ability to make some damn serious horsepower. So that's all we have for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and sign off, and until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things 1979 to present Mustang and SVT Lightning. Keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.